Provincial Capitals of China, Part 4. This video introduces the capital cities of six provinces. Shandong, Shanxi, Shanxi, Sichuan, Yunnan, Zhejiang. The name Shandong is the combination of words for mountain and east. Its capital is Jinan. The first character, Ji, refers to the Jishui River, and Nan means south. Jinan. South of the Jishui River. But don't look for the Jishui River on the map. Some Chinese place names refer to geographical features that no longer exist. For ages, the Jishui River's waters flowed to the north of this ancient city. But then, in the middle of the 19th century, the Yellow River jumped its banks and took over the river channel of the Jishui. So now, it is the Yellow River that you can see on the map north of Jinan. Jinan is positioned close to both Taishan, China's easternmost holy mountain, and Chufu, the birthplace of Confucius. Jinan's nickname is Spring City. It gets this nickname from abundant spots where water bubbles up from underground. Jinan is a historic jewel in eastern China. Now let's move our focus to the province of Shanxi. Its name combines the words for mountain and west. Its capital is Taiyuan, which means Great Plains. Indeed, the city lies in a flat area bounded on both the east and west by mountains. Taiyuan straddles the Fun River and is graced by a number of historic buildings. To the west of Shanxi, we come to Shanxi. Its name means west of the Shan Pass. Its capital is Xi'an, which is famous throughout the world for the nearby site of the Terracotta Army. It lies just south of the Wei River, which is the Yellow River's largest tributary. Xi'an means Western Peace. Formerly known as Chang'an, Xi'an is famed as one of China's most important ancient capital cities. Xi'an is often cited as having been the capital under Qin Shi Huang, China's first emperor. That reference is almost correct. The actual capital during the Qin dynasty was immediately adjacent to Xi'an to its northwest and was called Xinyang. That tiny geographical detail aside, Xi'an was indeed China's capital during a dozen dynasties. The prehistory of this area goes back a million years to early humanoids of whom partial skulls have been found in a nearby county an anthropologists call Lantian Man. Moving forward in time, we reach a Neolithic settlement called Ban Po, dating back 6,000 years, whose remains were discovered in the 1950s. Throughout recorded imperial history, Xi'an was a significant city. As the eastern terminus of the ancient Silk Road, it attracted visitors, merchants, and settlers from many parts of Asia. The Great Mosque of Xi'an and the adjacent neighborhood reflect the continued influence of Islam in China. In the 7th century, during the Tang Dynasty, the Buddhist monk Xuan Tsang traveled to India, returning with a vast trove of holy books. These were subsequently translated into Chinese by a team in Xi'an working at the Great Wild Goose Pagoda. A wild fantasy tale based on Xuan Zhang's trip was published in the 16th century as Journey to the West. This book is considered one of the four great classics of Chinese literature. 
Modern Xi'an is an important commercial and industrial center with focus areas ranging from traditional silk to aerospace technology. Xi'an Jiao Tong University can be found here, one of the country's top-rated institutions of higher learning. Xi'an, packed full of history, remains one of China's most important cities. Moving to the southwest, we come to Sichuan. The origin of its name is a bit complex, but many people find it most convenient to just remember its literal meaning, Four Rivers. The capital city of this province is Chengdu. By now, you are probably accustomed to hear of disagreements about the origin of certain Chinese place names. The name Chengdu falls into this category. The currently popular explanation is that it means becomes a capital. This is indeed one literal interpretation of the name itself. The explanation is based on a late 10th century historical work that quotes a leader during the Shang Dynasty saying, In the first year a town, the second a city, and the third a capital. As the story goes, the quote later impressed a king of the Shu kingdom who applied the name to Chengdu. But other scholars say that the city name Chengdu is the phonetic rendering of the phrase Land of the Cheng from the language of the ancient Di Cheng people who lived in the region. Whatever the name's origin, it has stuck with the city since ancient times. Nicknames for the city include Hibiscus City and Turtle City. The latter name is said to come from either the shape of the city or a legend wherein the path of the city walls was determined by observing the movement of a turtle. Although Chengdu is not a famous imperial capital like Xi'an, it did serve as the capital of various kingdoms over the centuries. In fact, it figures in another of China's ancient classics, The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, an epic tale of contention for power at the end of the Han Dynasty. The book generally favors the viewpoint of the Shu Kingdom, led by Liu Bei. He was one of the three important characters who, according to tradition, swore an oath in a peach garden to be brothers until death. Chengdu was the final stronghold of the Shu Kingdom. The giant panda, which has become a symbol of China, is native to Sichuan Province, and the famous Chengdu Giant Panda Breeding Research Base is located just outside Chengdu. The image of this adorable black and white bamboo-eating mammal is to be found all around the city. Slipping south, we come to the province of Yunnan. Its name means south of the cloudy peaks. Yunnan boasts more ethnic minorities than any other province. Its capital is Kunming, whose name derives from Kunming Yi, the name of a branch of the Di Qiang people mentioned with regard to Chengdu. The city's nickname is Spring City. But unlike Jinan, the other spring city, this time spring refers to the season. This is a reference to consistent pleasant weather and mild temperatures. They say that in this city the flowers bloom all year long. The Golden Horse and Jade Rooster archways grace Jinbi Square near the center of the city. These are symbols of a local legend in which a golden horse descended from the sun and a jade rooster flew in from the moon. Everywhere the two went, they made merry, singing and dancing together, causing trees and grasses to blossom with gold. We will now leap to the east and arrive at the province of Zhejiang. It's named for the Zhe River, the ancient name for the Qintang River. The capital city is Hangzhou, which for much of its ancient history was called Qintang City. Yep, 
the same name as the current name of the river. Then in 589 of the Common Era, the Sui Dynasty Emperor discarded the name Qiantang and renamed the capital Hangzhou. To understand the name Hangzhou, we must go back in time to that magical but fuzzy border between legend and verified history. There we encounter Da Yu, the great-great-grandson of the legendary Yellow Emperor. In Da Yu's time, China suffered a great series of floods. His father had unsuccessfully tried to remedy the situation by constructing various dams. Da Yu took over the struggle and tirelessly traveled all around the country, implementing a different solution that included dredging rivers and the creation of networks of irrigation canals. For this, he is known as the man who controlled the water. At a site near the sea, he established a port from which boats and workers traveled in the effort to control flooding that came from the sea. Once the work was completed, he left some of the boats and workers. That spot became known as Yu Hong Guo, which means the land of remaining boats. Later, this spot became a district named Yu Hong within Qin Tang. When the Sui Dynasty Emperor decided to rename the capital, he took the name Yu Hong, dropped the first character, and added our old familiar Zhou to the end. Hangzhou. Hangzhou has had a remarkable history and is one of the eight most important imperial capitals. The Song Dynasty was one of the outstanding periods of Chinese history. And it was in Hangzhou that the Southern Song Dynasty set up its capital as China retreated under pressure from the Jurchen Jin Dynasty to the north. But the city is not just important politically. There is much more. Over the centuries, beautiful West Lake at the edge of the city has inspired artists and poets. Hangzhou is also famous for the powerful tidal bore of the Qintang River. This phenomenon occurs when the moon causes the high tide from the sea to push upstream against the flow of the river. Note the funnel shape of the mouth of the river. This shape amplifies the effect of the tide. This is the largest tidal bore in the world, and the rush of water heading upriver causes waves that can reach 30 feet in height as they barrel along at 25 miles an hour. The Chinese name of the tidal bore is Silver Dragon. Hangzhou is also the southern end of China's famous Grand Canal. Covering more than a thousand miles, it is the longest canal in the world. Although the initial sections were built in the 5th century before the Common Era, the full canal is considered to date to the Sui Dynasty. Later improvements, including installation of pound locks, made the canal more efficient. Although the northernmost segment near Beijing has fallen into disuse, the canal is still a major commercial artery carrying heavy goods such as bricks, gravel, and coal between Hangzhou and Shandong province. Remember Hangzhou as the remarkable city that is the capital of Zhejiang province. We have now reached the end of part four, having introduced the capital cities of six provinces. Part five will introduce the capitals of China's autonomous regions. Stay tuned.